Hello and welcome to the video game sound design series on Massive. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make some horror complicated ambiences and kind of stab sounds as well. A lot of horror games need really stylized, unique sounds. You can't just use Foley for absolutely everything, especially when a ghost appears or a zombie appears. Usually it's something that's pretty stylistic and not anything. It's not a specific sound. It's just something that makes you jump or something that makes you feel unsettled. So that's the type of sound we're going to be making today. So if you haven't watched my Basics of Massive series in this playlist, go through that first so you understand what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And also on top of that, I'm also going to be posting this patch in the description below so you can download it and use it in whatever it is that you're working on. All right, so let's get started. So like normal, we're going to start in our oscillator section over here on the left. So this first one, what we're going to do is change it to one known as colors. Now this is a really cool sounding wavetable and I'll just play a few notes for you. Very neat sounding, very, very cool. Sounds like a sound that actually comes up in a lot of Japanese games. I can't really put my finger on it, but I'm sure you've heard something like it before. So that's the first sound. We want something a little bit mellow for this ambience and that fits the bill. It has a lot of good character. So next up, what we're going to do is pick another one that is known as camcord over here. We'll turn our oscillator on. So we have color and camcord, which again is over here on the far right. So I'll just play a few notes now with these two together. Again, both very colorful, characteristic, interesting sounds being played together. And we're going to have a third oscillator here because we want this to be a complicated sound. And what we're going to do for our third one, let's see if I can find it. I always forget where certain things are. Ah, yes, there it is. Multiplex. So basic multiplex is what this one is. So it's in the basic column. So now let's play all these together. So we have a little bit of that metallic bell sound, which we're going to get rid of a little bit, but we want some sort of unsettling, stabby sort of sound to this horror ambience slash horror stab that we're working on. Okay, so that's where we're going to start. Next up, I'm going to add some noise to this sound. Especially considering it's going to be an ambience, I do want a little bit of noise added in. I want some unpitched elements, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to use the aluminum noise. And I'll turn this up so you can hear what that sounds like. So the aluminum noise is this unpitched element that will add underneath everything else. So you can hear it's very metallic sounding. If I turn it down. Sounds like a metal can being crushed, essentially, or paper being rustled. I really, really like it, and it'll be very cool for our ambience. And I add some kind of random character to it. So next up, we're going to add some feedback. And again, if you don't know what this does, essentially this takes a signal and then feeds it back into one of the two filters that we're playing with, or both, if you set this fader in the middle. So I'm going to turn this up just a bit. This is going to add some aggressiveness to our sound. Let's turn it up about there. Yeah, now let's play with it. So again, I'll turn this off and then turn it up gradually so you can hear what it's doing. So adding just a little bit more character to it. Now let's play with our filters, which is very, very important. So we're going to have two filters on in this sound. Uh, I'm going to use a scream which sounds kind of like this. Let me turn the cutoff up so you can hear more of it. Kind of an interesting, distorted sort of filter, so I really, really like that. But I don't want this to be super harsh of a sound, so I'm going to turn this down just a little bit, turn the scream or kind of distortion up a little bit, and I'll play with the resonance a little bit as well. Let's see.
So something along those lines. Now, before we get to the second filter, I want to point out that right now, this whole sound is pitched perfectly. So if I play a D, we hear a D. But what I want, just like with a lot of sound design, is for this to be kind of out of, out of tune with itself. So I'm going to unpitch these. I'm going to take this one down by nine semitones and bring the third oscillator up by two. Let's take a listen. So that adds a little bit of bassiness, a little bit of deepness. It's not perfectly out of tune with one another. We're not going in between the semitones, but it's certainly not a typical chord that you would hear when you pr play one of these notes. So next up, what I'm going to do is add a second filter, and that's going to be a band reject filter. And what that does is it chooses a band and then cuts that out or filters that out. So I'll turn this fader up so we hear both and I'll put this slider down just a hair so we're hearing both filter one and filter two's results so let's play with this let's turn this cut off on the first one down just a bit let's go around here cool and let's turn the resonance up turn the bandwidth down I like that sound. All right, so there's a decent kind of starting point, and you may be saying it doesn't really sound like any sort of ambience right now, and that's okay, because we still have to add effects and envelopes, which is kind of a new thing that we're going to introduce in making a sound in this video. So next up, what I'm going to do is add some insert effects down here. So I'm going to add both of these, turn both of these on. The first one I'm going to use is the frequency shifter, which does exactly what it sounds like. So let's play around with this. So you can hear already it's adding some ghostly elements deep underneath that sound as kind of an extra layer. Next thing I'm going to add is a sign shaper. Let's see, where is that? There it is. So this is a wave shaper. So I'll play around with these parameters. Let's start around there and edit it if anything comes up. Okay, cool. So we're not done, we're far from done. So next up, what we're gonna do is add effects here. So master effects over here on the kind of top right. So now what I'm going to do is add reverb, which I like to joke is the fairy dust of sound design. Just put more on and everything will sound great. But in the case of our horror ambience, our horror sound, we do want reverb. We want some sort of build. We want a tail. We want it to sound like it's in an otherworldly space, which is perfect. So we'll do reverb. Let's play around with the reverb and see what comes up. You can hear it sounding really crazy as I change the size on the fly. So let's start there and see how that kind of pans out. I might turn actually the wet up a little bit. Turn the size down. Cool. Let's start there. And next up, I'll add a really cool effect known as the Dimension Expander, which is kind of a chorus mixed with a Spatializer plugin. It's kind of its own thing. So I'll play around with this and see how this sounds. Okay, cool. So we have some effects set up. We have a general kind of sound set up. But as you already notice, it doesn't sound like a horror ambience or anything like that. And simply put, we haven't played with enough parameters yet. So we haven't played with any of the intensity or wavetable positions or anything like that yet. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to leave the intensity alone for the first oscillator, but I'm going to turn the wavetable position down. So we get a different waveform being played in this color section here. 
Then in this chord section, I'm also going to turn this wavetable position down, and I'm also going to turn the intensity down. And when you're in spectrum mode, intensity basically is almost like a low pass filter, so it's cutting off some of the high frequencies. And now, in this third oscillator, I'm going to turn this intensity knob way down, so we're getting rid of a lot of the high frequencies. There it is. So now things are starting to sound less and less stereotypical synthy and a little, little bit more like an ambience, but we, again, still have a bit to go. So there is a good starting point for our sound. Next up, what I'm going to do is start adding envelopes to some of these sounds. So I'm going to add envelope one to a whole bunch of these sounds because I want the sound to build in. I want it to have a bit of a slow attack. So I'm going to turn this attack knob up in envelope one. Let's go about, let's say there. Let's play around with that. And now what I'm going to do is apply envelope one to all three of these amp knobs. So basically, I want the volume of these three oscillators to fade in, and I want them to fade in kind of differently from one another. So what I'm going to do is turn the volume for the first oscillator down and increase the range of this envelope. And when I'm doing that just by clicking and dragging that one that I put in that tiny little box on the bottom left. And what this is doing is it's saying, OK, you want the volume to start where this line is, and then it will gradually fade up to the maximum volume based on the speed of the attack that you set. So it's going to start here and then gradually go up to the maximum volume depending on the speed of this attack knob down here. So it'll basically fade in in a way. It'll start somewhat loud and then fade in and get louder. So what I'm going to do is attach that same envelope by clicking this little arrow thing and attach it to oscillator two. But I want this to start out really, really quiet and then fade in. So now this sound is gonna start off pretty quiet and then fade in to maximum volume based on the speed of this attack knob. And then next up, I'm gonna click this, these four pointing arrows and do the same for oscillator three. So I'm gonna make this similar to oscillator one in that it will start somewhat loud and then get louder based on the speed of this attack knob. So things will kind of fade in a little bit. So let me play that for you now. So it's not such a harsh attack anymore, which is what we wanted. So next up, I'm actually going to use envelope one in a whole bunch of places. You don't have to just stick with these oscillators. So I'm actually going to insert this on the amplitude knob of the noise. So I don't want the noise to always be there. I want it to fade in gradually. Because, because we're working with an ambience, I want this to sound a little bit more dynamic, a little bit random. So I want this kind of aluminum crunching can sound to fade in so it's not always playing. And I'm noticing that this noise is pretty high pitched. So I'm going to turn this color knob down, which should get rid of some of those high frequencies. There we go. It's getting rid of most of those high frequencies, which is what I wanted, but I still want a little of that grit in there. So this is perfect. So now what I'm going to do is use the this envelope on insert one and insert effect two, so down here. So I'm going to click and drag, or you can just click these little arrows once, let go of the left mouse button and then kind of click wherever it is you like, wherever you want to place this. So I'm going to put this on the dry wet of each of these insert effects so that these insert effects don't act right away. Basically, I want them to gradually become more and more strong as time goes on. So that's how I'm set up right now. So let's play around with this. Turn this noise down just a hair in the color section as well to get rid of that crunch. I want a little, but not too much. Cool. Great. Okay, so next up, I'm actually going to go into this voicing tab over here in the center panel. 
and I'm going to use one of my favorite features, which is known as Unisono, which basically says, okay, how many of this sound do you want to play at the same time? So what it does is it's going to play four voices every time I press one key. And then what I can do with these sliders here after I turn them on in the Unisono spread section is have each of these four voices be slightly out of tune with one another and also have them be in different wavetable positions so that they are gonna have a different sound. So each of the four voices won't be the exact copy of one another. They will be out of pitch with one another, out of tune with one another, and also have different wavetable positions to one another, slightly, not extremely, but just enough to give it more character. So now this is kind of where I'm gonna set it and I'm gonna hit some keys. As you can hear, it gets a lot louder, a lot more menacing sounding, which is great. That's exactly what I want. And then what I'm going to do next is probably just going to turn this master knob down, actually, just so it doesn't blow anyone's ears out. And I'm going to add some EQ. So there's a built-in equalizer in Massive, so I'm going to turn that on. And then what I'll do is get rid of some of those low frequencies. I don't want this to be super rumbly. And I'll add in some high frequencies as well. So this is a low shelf. How much do you want to boost or cut? Then a high shelf. How much do you want to boost or cut? So let's do something like that. Let me octave down on my keyboard here. Play with this feedback here, see if that... Nah, we'll just leave the feedback alone, actually. Testing it with and without noise. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is actually take my keyboard, turn the octave down to minus three, and I'm just gonna hold the key down. Let's make this a little louder here. And I'm gonna turn the noise off, actually. Let's get rid of that. All right, now let's octave up and see how that sounds. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're almost there. One thing I'd like to do is actually play with this sign shaper and the frequency shifter down here to make it sound a little more horrific, which is exactly what we're going for. So I'm going to gradually turn the drive up on this sign shaper. Ooh, that's cool. So I'm going to leave it around there so it doesn't blow out anyone's eardrums. And the frequency shifter, let's actually turn it down. Let's see how that sounds. That's cool. I like that a lot. So let's play around with this. It might sound great in some octaves. It might sound terrible in others. Let's see. So I'm going to go octave down on my keyboard and just play some random stuff. Oh, yes. That would be a very cool layer as a subtle horror ambience. I'd probably turn this way down if I was using this in a game. I wouldn't use it at this volume. But this can be a great layer to add some extra character to an ambience. Now let's go octave up and see how that sounds. I'm going to turn it down on the master so it doesn't kill anyone's ears. So that could be an interesting stab-like effect or stinger or something that is supposed to draw attention to itself in some way, shape, or form. 
So this is a great starting point for some sort of horror sound. Again, I wouldn't use this on its own. I would layer it with something, some sort of rumbly sound or some upper frequency sound and play with a synthesizer and with some sort of recorded source file as well. So like I mentioned, I'm going to upload this patch. So feel free to download it. And if you like this video, please sign up for my newsletter. That's where all my best stuff is shared. And if you want to make a career in the video game industry, that's the place to learn how to do it. And of course, watch my talk from the Game Developers Conference in Europe, where I gave a talk on the sound design behind the game Hyperlight Drifter. So please watch that, and I'll see you in the next video.